Well, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome. I'm Pastor John, along with Pastor Randy. We're your clergy team here. and grateful to have the Wesley Ringers give us a meditative moment this St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. And, uh, and I didn't say this at, at 9.30, but I hope that if you'll take a moment today to learn about the real St. Patrick. Uh, I see a lot of you have green on, which is great. Uh, a couple years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Ireland and uh, go to St. Patrick's Cathedral. And the story of St. Patrick and the Celts and the early church, um, it leans so much on hospitality, as you'll hear in Pastor Randy's sermon later today. So I hope you take a moment to hear the real, true story there. But once again, welcome to Aldersgate, whether you're online or in person. Uh, it's our mission here at Aldersgate. Uh, you'll see it pop up on the screen. It's to courageously live and share God's unconditional love with everyone, every day, with everyone, everywhere. We hope you'll join us in that mission. Um, we hope that you fill out on your, your prayer slip on your bulletin. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to fill out your presence and your prayers, uh, your responses. And if this is your first time, Mark Husband's going to give you a welcome back. So just raise your hand. We'd love to extend some hospitality to you and welcome you um, in the love of Jesus Christ. As you fill out your slip this morning, uh, you have, if you have prayer requests, please list those down. The pastors and prayer team will lift those up or you can send those electronically. A few announcements for us today is that we're still in the nomination season of the church. So if you're interested or curious about serving and leadership, if you have gifts or if you feel God's call in your heart to, to serve in some capacity, please let Randy and I know. Uh, we've got packets available at the back um, if you would like to grab one and take one. In your bulletin, you'll find that there's an Easter flower order form. Please go ahead and fill that out. If you've not done so, today is the last day to order Easter flowers so we can have them here in time for the holidays. Our Crafty Kids are, are meeting today. That's from 4 to 5 in our Gooback Center. Of course, it's St. Patrick's theme, and it's from ages 3 to 10. Uh, so hope kids that, that age group will join us for a great craft in time. Our Nature Prayer Walk is next Saturday. This has been moved from 9.30 in the morning to 5.30 p.m. Uh, Christine Curley is going to lead that walk for us. Uh, this is a great opportunity to connect with others, pray, invite a neighbor or friend, and this is going to be at Huntley Meadows Park. Next Sunday, there's no Sunday school for children as well as Easter, but we have a lot of great activities, including our King's Kid Worship Dance, which will be next Sunday during the 930 hour. So that's for kids age 4 to 11. Uh, we invite them to meet in the narthex, and then we will move on into Founders Hall with the kiddos. That's ages 4 to 11. Our Holy Week services are coming up. You have uh, information about that. But what we need from you all is we need some ministry partners and volunteers to help in a variety of areas. Uh, we need acolytes for both services for Palm Sunday. Monday, Thursday, we're still looking for a communion server. We especially need uh, readers for Good Friday. We're doing the Tenebrae service. We have a lot of scripture to cover. Um, and Easter Sunday, we still have some needs for ushers and communion servers. So we hope that you'll uh, sign up if you've not done so yet. It's right on the website, easy to find, or in the newsletter. And as I mentioned in your bulletin, you do have uh, this invitation to, to hand out to someone who's a neighbor or friend, put up on a community board somewhere. Unfortunately, due to high winds, our banner out there has ripped and torn. So you guys are the banner. You guys get to take this out of the community, share it with somebody, let them know that we've got Palm Sunday next week. We have our Good Friday or Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, on the 28th, and that will be live streamed as well, along with our Good Friday service on the 29th. That will be live streamed. And then, of course, Easter Sunday on the 31st. Uh, weather permitting will be out on the front lawn, 6.30 for our sunrise service, and then we'll have our regular 9.30 and 11 services. So hope you'll take that with you, uh, share that with a neighbor or a friend. Uh, as far as missions go, we want to invite you to think about our Woodlawn Faith Food Distribution. This is our March mission focus. Uh, we've been highlighting that throughout this month and all the ways that we partner together with Woodlawn. April 5th is the next opportunity, and you can see Karen Lada if you want more information. We've got a blood drive coming up with the Red Cross. That's on the 28th from 12 to 5.30 in Wesley Hall. Please sign up if you're interested uh, in donating blood. It's right on our website. 
And of course, right after Easter, we have our Serve Sunday. This is where we'll have one worship service at 10 a.m. with Woodlawn Faith. It'll be a great celebration and continue the Easter celebration. And then we'll move into Wesley Hall for packing meals, uh, 30,000 meal kits that day. We invite you to sign up online just so we know how many people are coming to serve, but we expect a ton of people that day uh, to package meals uh, to serve those around the world. Friends, with those announcements before us today, I invite you to stand as you're able. Let's lift our voices now for our call to worship. Jesus said, love one another, even as I have loved you. Love that is more powerful than fear it is mightier than hatred. Let the love which God has lavished upon us be poured out to those in need. Help us, O oh Lord, to witness to you by the ways in which we care for others. Remind us, Lord, that we are called to be your disciples. As we, we worship, worship this morning, heal our hearts and spirits and, and prepare, prepare us for, for service. service. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please join us in the singing of our opening hymn today, number 369 in our hymnal, Blessed Assurance. Let's continue to lift our voices in praise now as we join together in a prayer of St. Patrick. Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ in us, Christ beneath us, Christ above us, Christ on our right, Christ on our left, Christ where we lie, Christ where we sit, Christ where we arise, Christ is a heart of everyone who thinks of us. Christ in every eye that sees us. 
Christ in every ear that hears us. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Christ. May your salvation, Lord, be ever with us. Amen. you to give a wave to those online and turn to your neighbor and offer signs of God's peace. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day. It's uh, so great to have both our Wesley Ringers and our Wesley Choir with us today. The Wesley, uh, Wesley Ringers earlier played a piece called Beautiful Savior. It is also known as Ferris Lord Jesus from our hymnal, and that's the tune. Um, it is praise to God as the ruler of all people and all nature. Such a beautiful hymn. And what uh, Wesley Choir will be singing for you today is a piece called Ubi Caritas. And this is a modern arrangement by a guy named Victor C. Johnson. Um, and originally, Ubi Caritas was an 18th century Gregorian chant, and it was during Holy Week, uh, specifically the washing of the feet. And it was really constrained to that place for many, 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 many years. And it was finally liberated from uh, Good Fr uh, from Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, and it became increasingly popular amongst choirs um, because it, it translates to where charity and love are, God is there. Love of Christ has gathered us into one. Let us rejoice in him and be glad. And that can be sung anytime, anywhere, with all people forever. So it has become a choir favorite, and uh, we're so thankful that we get to be singing this version today. And I just wanna say for everyone out there, St. Patrick's Day fans, uh, the choir behind me is wearing their green today. You can't pinch them. <laughs> and you too can avoid getting pinched as well by joining the choir. We have these gorgeous green robes for you. Anyways, I kid, I kid everybody. Please enjoy Ubi Caritas. Thank you. 
Good morning. Today's reading comes from Matthew 25 and Hebrews 13. Now listen for the word of God, beginning with the 34th verse of Matthew. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. And from Hebrews 13, do not de- neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join us for the singing of our scripture hymn, number 430, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning, church family. Glad to have everybody with us today um, as we push deeper into the uh, Lenten season. And uh, as Kevin was already mentioning, acts of Holy Week are nearly upon us. So we're grateful for your presence today. Thank you, uh, Bell Choir. Thank you, Choir, for your beautiful pieces of music. Uh, I'd like to let you know that uh, at our 930 service, we were fortunate to have the Barnes family join our church. Uh, We had Brandon and Shelly join, military family, active duty, be in the area maybe three, four years. And uh, they had Luke and Carter, uh, their six and four-year-old, baptized uh, this morning. So that was really, really special. Also, uh, I'm thinking uh, as I get into the message today and having the opportunity to talk about hospitality, I'm just mindful that one of our founding members, uh, Charlotte Rexrode, passed away this week. And I would have to say Charlotte was one of those Miss Hospitality people. I mean, she just welcomed everybody, knew everybody, and if, uh, wasn't afraid to interact with people wherever they were. Some of you were probably coaxed into church leadership by Charlotte at some point in time. So I just want to be mindful of 
that. And Saturday, uh, we'll be celebrating her life at 9 o'clock here in the sanctuary. So you may have already got your note about that as well. I also had a special uh, guest I want to just share about because of this whole hospitality thing. A young lady was at our 930 service today that I've known since she was about three or four years old. Her name was um, Donna Moore. And Donna was adopted by her family while I was still out in Riverton. And I can remember during Holy Week and all the time leading up to that, we were praying for this little girl that we had never met. Larry and Margie, uh, her mom and dad, her adopted mom and dad were very active in the church. And I can remember that evening. It must have been either an Ash Wednesday or a Monday Thursday service. And when they came in the door and brought her in for the first time, she was just, and she was here today. Now the key about that is we have a lady in our church by the name of Sarah Lynn Mertens. So she doesn't know who Donna is. And they were outside at door three. And when I came in and looked, there is Donna sitting with Sarah Lynn that met her at door three and said, come on in with me and sit with me. I've got a place for you. You know, and that gift of hospitality, I told Sarah Lynn, thank you for that gift of hospitality to my friend Donna today and just bringing her back into the church and what that looks like. And that's a true gift. So uh, all those things are running around in my heart, my mind, and my spirit today. And so get ready to share the message. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for the music. We thank you for the scripture. We thank you for the opportunity to engage with you and one another as we gather in this place. Lord, for new members, for past friends, for new friends that we're going to make as you allow us to use the gift of hospitality that you've placed in our hearts. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our rock, our redeemer, our refuge, and our friend. Amen. It was the summer before we lost our daughter Kelsey in a car accident, 2008. We were doing a major renovation of our sanctuary at Culpeper UMC. New carpet, pew cushions, fresh paint, new AV system, screens, projectors. We had moved worship downstairs to the fellowship hall underneath the sanctuary. It would seat about 175 people and it was packed for three services for six weeks. Now, a new family of seven people showed up one of those Sundays, the Brooks family. And they would keep coming back uh, to call Pepper up until we left Call Pepper for Alexandria. Every Christmas Eve, after the final service on Christmas Eve, I would make it home a little wore out from the four services. And there would be a knock at the door. And we opened it up, and there would be the Brooks family, all seven members, Christmas caroling for us, for all things, in all four ranges, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, the harmonizing Brooks family style. I asked them one time why they decided on Culpeper UMC and what it was that kept them uh, coming back and staying around. Was it our vibrant youth program? Maybe mission trips? Uh, people had opportunities going on. Awesome worship. Maybe great preaching. I put a smiley face there, okay? Great small groups. Well, guess what? None of that. It was because their daughter, Kat, was greeted with open arms by a kid of mine who happened to sing in the youth praise band. Hi, I'm Kelsey. What's your name? Hi, I'm Kat. Well, nice to meet you. Glad you came. And they stayed around for all those years. Hospitality at its simplest because one teen engaged with another teen, making them feel welcomed, acknowledged, heard, and accepted, and saying to mom and dad, that's where I want to be. Kelsey happened to like a Christian music group called the Newsboys. I don't know if any of you have ever heard the Newsboys. They've been around a good while. Uh, one of the guys by the name of Phil Joel wrote a song entitled Entertaining Angels. And it just happened that Andreas and the band sang that song at 930. They did a great job. And, you know, I know Kelsey really liked the song, but then I was looking it up this week, and I come across this picture of Phil Joel, and I said, well, no wonder she liked the guy. He's kind of cute on top of it. He doesn't just sing well. He's kind of cute, you know. It's, it's, it's just a thing. But the song starts out, one to another, do you remember me? I feel so small. Well, are you listening 
tonight, so temporary the things that I have seen, I ran so far, will you take me back again, entertaining angels? Now, Kelsey loved that song, and in many ways, I think it defined her short 17 years of life. It didn't really seem to matter who she met or where. She had this ability just to make friends. She loved missions and I think displayed a true gift of Christian hospitality. Between three gatherings after her passing, over 1,500 people attended her celebration of life, showing their respect and love for her and also offering grace and love back to us, her parents and her family. You know, if you've ever attended a celebration of life service that I do, you've heard me say this, and I'll say it almost every time because I believe it. Nothing that the heart gives away is ever lost as long as it's kept and lived out in the hearts and in the lives of others. Actually, the words entertaining angels is on Kelsey's marker there at the cemetery. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not sure I've ever thought of hospitality as a way to nourish or feed our own souls, which we've been talking about during the Lenten season until now. Have you ever experienced the hospitality of having family, friends, neighbors open their door, their arms, their homes to you, which made you feel welcomed without any strings attached? Actually, we were able to do so uh, this week when uh, my brother-in-law and nephew came up from Richmond because they wanted to go down to the ACC basketball tournament downtown this week. And, you know, they hadn't been up at all and visited with us. It was nice just to open the doors, no strings attached, come be with us and let's hang out for a while and visit with family. Our culture, which so often creates fear of strangers, does not lend itself very well to true hospitality. Like humility, hospitality is a little bit counter-cultural. And yet both humility and hospitality are both biblical, and it seems they go hand in hand. It's hard to be hospitable if one does not have a bit of humility, because hospitality tends to be about the other versus the I. Jesus says it, inasmuch as you've done it for another, you've also done it unto me. Now, in ancient history, hospitality was seen in practice as part of survival. People traveling through did not have the nice gas stations or bathrooms or restaurants to rest at and refuel like we have when we travel today. One never knew if a stranger or a caravan were a friend or a foe. So codes of hospitality were strict. If a person was passing through on your property, you were bound to provide shelter and food. Hospitality then had to transcend human differences so that the basic needs could be met and then people could go on their way. Now, the main Old Testament story around hospitality, and you may know it, revolves around three strangers who show up on the horizon at Abraham and Sarah's place. The stories in Genesis 18 where they welcome the three angels. Abraham asks Sarah to prepare bread and they're welcomed. The angels share about Sarah getting pregnant in her old age so that the promise of God to Abraham might be fulfilled to having offspring as numerous as the sand and the stars. In a way, the angels represent God. And hospitality then was seen as a way of meeting and receiving holy presence. Now, as we move to the New Testament, the practice of hospitality for Christians was a risk and yet was also seen as an opportunity to meet the risen Christ. Marjorie Thompson shares an old Celtic ruin, oft, oft, oft goes the Christ in the stranger's guise. Now, it's been a practice in many monasteries to welcome all guests as one might welcome Christ with the idea, for I was a stranger and you took me in. Maybe that's a good practice as well in the local church today. Hi, I'm, you fill in your name. What's your name? Well, it's nice to meet you. Many were won over to Christ throughout the Roman Empire because of the hospitality of the early church. The quality and the mutual respect and love they had for each other and the stranger 
created hospitable space for very different kinds of people to enter and therefore find a spiritual home. Hospitality, you see, I think at its root, is really an expression of love. The deeper learning for us is that the root word of hospitality focuses on both the host and the guest. I mean, have you ever noticed in our hospitality that we offer so often we receive as much or more than what we give? And I always think that's the ironic piece. Think about it. So when the two men were on the Emmaus Road after Jesus' death and mysterious disappearance, did someone take his body? They are suddenly joined on the road by this stranger who asked them what's been happening in Jerusalem. Well, they're a bit shocked. Well, where in the world have you been all weekend? Have you not heard what's going on, what's happening? And as they walk along to their village, it almost feels like they forget about being hospitable. However, they do think maybe we should invite him to come be with us. And they extend the invitation, inviting him into their setting. While at the meal, the stranger shares, and when he blesses the bread, their eyes are suddenly opened and their hearts are strangely warmed. It was Jesus. It was Jesus there on the road with us after all, entertaining angels. Well, how about entertaining Jesus? Because you see, the scripture says, we never know in as much as we do. Now, it's taken some time, but I'm convinced one of the best ways we show hospitality to others is simply by listening, being interested in people, caring, at times offering something we have, just giving somebody, if you will, the time of day. Also, there's this deeper sense that we are called to show hospitality to others because God shows hospitality to us. Now think about that. That's a concept I don't often think about. Well, how is God showing hospitality to us? Well, Thompson says, and I agree, hospitality doesn't come easy to us until we're deeply rooted in the experience of God's grace and being transformed by that grace. We have neither the living example nor the strength of commitment to live hospitably in a hostile world. If we show hospitality at all, it's because we are responding to God's grace for us. Think about it. When Jesus came to us in the form of a baby, it was kind of like God entering enemy territory. Why? To show us God's love and forgiveness, acceptance and grace. Jesus, you see, came as a stranger. In fact, the scripture says his own didn't even receive him. He was despised. He was rejected. Yet he opened his arms wide to receive anyone who would believe and be willing to receive him. For as much as you've done it to another, you've done it unto me. And friends, that's divine hospitality. God reveals the deepest part of hospitality to you and I. And it's when this Lenten season is, it's where it's taking us to as we approach Holy Week. The length God goes to heal us is revealed on the cross. A costly divine forgiveness lies at the heart of the new creation. It's that hospitality God's offering us. What's it look like? Well, again, Jesus' arm stretched out on a beam, extended to release our sin, to receive all in love, and to invite us into a new life. The greatest sign of God's hospitality to all of us. There's no other gift of hospitality that can match God's. Hello, I'm God. And the truth is, God already knows you're my name. And God's looking at that and asking, how are you doing? I'm glad you're here. God's glad you're here. And yet there are many who will not open their hearts to receive such a gift. What Thompson shares makes sense. Our first act of hospitality to God is to receive what God wants to give us. How can we not? And how distressing it must be to God to offer us grace so freely only to have his children refuse it, ignore it, or even reject it. On the other hand, when we become willing to receive God's grace and welcome, we can then more naturally express hospitality to others. For what we receive, we can now give. We cannot separate our love for God and from others. And truthfully, this is what motivates us in the life of the church to do what we do around here every single day. It calls us to see each other as brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, 
all children of God. Now, I like to say this, I know what I know, but I still don't know what I don't know because what that does, it keeps me in a learning mode. There's no need to have to know it all or even think or pretend that I know it all. I'm learning with hospitality. Humility is important. Why? Because both accept people as they are for all the good and all the bad, what's comfortable and what's uncomfortable. Acceptance allows others to be free to be themselves in our space. However, we may not share one another's views or opinions all the time. Hospitality cannot impose that we do because we will likely have different views with many people. We must then learn to value the strangeness of the stranger and not be so quick within our Christian community to label people or to put people in a camp or to put ourselves in a camp for that matter, unless, of course, it's Jesus' camp. That's the camp we want to all be in. And we never know when the stranger might be Jesus, at least to know Jesus is within the stranger, or else we may miss out on having our eyes opened and our hearts warm like those fellows on the Emmaus Road that day because we're afraid of strangers or strangeness, we then would miss the opportunity to have a divine encounter. It's also true that practicing hospitality with our own family can actually be as challenging as with complete strangers. We show hospitality to our children and grandchildren by being present with them, to listen to them, to affirm them, guide them, and correct them. Are your children free? to learn from their mistakes? And then how do you handle conflict? Forgiveness actually shows hospitality. Playing with your kids is an expression of hospitality. If there is hospitality in the home, it greatly impacts hospitality offered to those outside as well as those who enter the home. I don't know about you, but we loved having our kids' friends over. It was a madhouse at times. Never had enough food in the refrigerator. It was a mess sometimes. But it was a hospitable home where all were welcome. Why, just three weekends ago, our youngest son with his girlfriend called and said, Hey, Mom and Dad, we're coming to Northern Virginia. Can we stop by and say hi? Well, that doesn't happen very often, okay? So we said yes. We tied it up quickly. We lit a candle that she had actually given Leanne for Christmas. We figured out what to fix for supper. Come on, we'd love to have you. We started watching basketball, but do you know at halftime we moved to the table and we started playing some card games together. We laughed, we smacked cards down on the table. Yes, we're still a little bit competitive. I won both games. <laughs> hey, I, I normally don't, okay? Uh, and I, I chose not to rub it in that day. But then I, I went and we fixed supper and we sat and we had a meal and it, what we thought might be a couple hours turned into a whole evening. Now, why all this? Why is that important? Well, on a deeper level, because we love our son, and we don't get to see him all the time. And then there's Brianna, whom we are just getting to know, and her getting to know us. And for us, it's really not about a good first impression. It's really about love. It's about acceptance and grace. We don't know where that relationship is going to go. But we know well enough that being hospitable paints a picture of who we are and how we live and how we share God's love that God has actually already shared with us. Friends, we can share hospitality wherever we go, at home, in the workplace, on the ball field, at the concert hall, in the grocery store, at the gym, in the fellowship hall, at the church, right over at Wesley, in our government settings, up on the hill, or even at the Pentagon. Sure, some forms of hospitality are riskier than others, a risk taken in faith, of course, and with courage. And it may still be the, actually the most enticing way to share our faith so that people might say, see how they love one another? And then for a moment, maybe even think, see how they love me? Entertaining angels in disguise, the song says. Entertaining angels, by the time I fall on my knees, host of heaven, God, sing over me, wash over me with your grace and your hospitality. You know what you know, but you still don't know what you don't know, and some still entertain angels, the scripture says, 
without knowing it. You'll be surprised that many times when you do, your own soul will actually feel fed and nourished. Keep an eye out, would you, this week for the opportunity that God gives you to share hospitality and see how God works in their life and see how God might work in yours as well. Could we pray together? Oh, hospitable God, thank you for opening your heaven to us for your love and acceptance, your compassion and forgiveness, and ultimately for the gift of your son, Jesus. Here we are, Lord, on the verge of entering another Palm Sunday and Holy Week. We ask that you help us to see with new eyes, to be open to new ways of being and living, and to see how you have expressed hospitality to us and even a promise that one day when our time on this earth is up, you have prepared a place for us to be with you. Eternal hospitality, quite a thought and quite a place that must be, we can only imagine. So, Lord, between here and there, help us to gain an expanded view of our lives. It might just make the world a better place. This we pray in the name of the one who opened his arms wide for us all, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And now, friends, let's join our hearts together as we share the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if our ushers will please come forward for the receiving of our morning tithes and offerings. If you're watching online today or even here in the sanctuary, there are different ways that you can give. You can see the uh, QR code there. You can scan it. You can give uh, online. You can give by text or in the offering plates. Thank you.
Let us pray. O oh, loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for your mercies, and we give you thanks that you are the creator of the whole universe. As your breath speaks and moves, life forms and is created. O oh God, especially as we stand in this march, as flowers begin to, to bloom, trees begin to have leaves, and our grass begins to grow, and there is new life everywhere. May we give you thanks and praise that you continue to create in and through our world. O oh God, we give you thanks that you're a God who reaches out to us, who knows us by name, who cares for each and every soul. And may our gifts be your gifts. May we share abundantly, radically towards our neighbors, our friends, strangers, and all those we've yet to meet. O oh God, would you bless the gifts that are poured out before us this day. May they continue your work of hospitality, your work of grace and love that moves towards us, so that all might know your name and all might seek your love. We pray this in Christ Jesus' holy name. Amen. And friends, let us continue to respond to the good news today as we join together for a prayer for all people. You can find it on the screens. God, we are aliens and sojourners in this world, but you invite us to be your guests. You lavishly offer us our hospitality and lovingly welcome us into your family. You invite us to share in the abundance of your kingdom. God, you have shown us that providing hospitality to strangers opens a doorway into the kingdom of God. Remind us that when we offer hospitality to others, we are receiving Christ into our midst, and so fulfilling the law of love. We open our hearts to embrace the stranger, the friend, the rich, and the poor. We open our lives to offer a generous heart toward all. Amen. Please join us in the singing of our closing hymn today, number 526 in our hymnal, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Friends, as we go on our way today, I just want to share a friendly reminder. Uh, obviously, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. You may remember a couple weeks ago, uh, I shared about our adopted uh, granddaughter and her birthday and her baptism is next Sunday. I'm not sure why Josh scheduled that on Palm Sunday because of her birthday, but uh, I'll be away. Pastor John will have everything uh, and run everything smoothly. We, I'm going to miss being with you all for Palm Sunday because it's one of those high days I really look forward to, but I'd never want to miss my granddaughter's baptism. What a gift she was. We prayed as much for her as we prayed almost for uh, Donna, which is what made this morning kind of special for me as well. So as we go on our way, we uh, ask God to be with us and guide us, and let's share in this benediction. Beloved of the Lord, go in peace, knowing that God's peace will be with you always. We go in service to God's world, helping those in need, sharing the gifts you've been given, maybe even entertaining angels and unaware. Go in love, bringing hope to all. Amen. Amen.